Hello, hello, this is Robin Sampson with BibleJournalClasses.com, and today I'm going to explain to you how our Bible study works. It's a 12 Bible era Bible study. We go through the entire Bible in one year, covering each of the 12 historical eras. And I'm going to try to switch back and forth between my desktop and me and explain this to you. But first I'll explain to you how I came up with this method. It's not my original idea, but I expanded on it. And I, I've homeschooled nine children for 30 years. And when we started learning about the Bible, I was completely lost. I didn't know where to start. And I tried many different methods. During that period, I found um, a learning style system called the format system that breaks all lessons into four different steps, introducing the topic, teaching the topic, reinforcing the topic by doing something with it is step three, and step four is sharing it with someone else. And I consistently use those four teaching steps that you can learn about on my site all through my curriculum, history, science, and, and everything I did. Um, even math. I, I think it's very important to start with why are we going to learn this? Because instead of just teaching it to the children, some children need to know why. So I found a, a book. It's called 30 Days to Understanding the Bible by Max Anders. And I just loved his concept. It made so much sense to me, um, just like we were studying American history by, you know, the Revolutionary War or early America, the colonists, etc. We could study the Bible in historical eras. So we go through all the entire Bible with 12 eras. And 12 eras is a lot easier to learn than 66 books. So it's a chronological study. We start with creation and ends with the missions, the Paul's writings. So I'm going to show you how this works, and hopefully you might want to join us. There is a Bible study and Bible journaling. You don't have to Bible journal to do this study, but it's a lot of fun if you do. And I suggest that you try the Bible study and then see if the Bible journaling appeals to you. Because in every lesson that I teach, I include Bible journaling uh, ideas. So here, here's how it works. This is BibleJournalClasses.com, my website. And here you will see the Bible 12 Bible eras. These are actually the book covers of the books that are coming out that are based on the classes. So it's, it's like a timeline that gives you the 12 historical classes. So it starts with creation, then the patriarchal era. Creation, we go through Genesis 1 through 11. Then we go to the patriarch Adam, era, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph in great detail. The exodus era from Moses' birth through his dealing with the pharaohs and 40 years in the desert and through the Red Sea, 40 years in the desert, and then getting to the promised land, going back to the promised land. And we'll take a peek at some of these lessons in a few minutes. Then the conquest era where Joshua uh, takes over for Moses and goes, for, goes on into the promised land, starting with Jericho. Then we have the judges era and then Samson and all the other judges. Then the kingdom era where we go through Saul on David and all his challenges. And remember that each one of these classes, we are learning about Jesus because the entire Bible reveals Jesus. We don't see him in person until the New Testament, but we see him all, his shadow of him all the way through because the Bible is one unified story. And when you don't know the Old Testament, it's like jumping in, it's because it's three quarters of the Bible is the Old Testament. So if you jump into the New Testament and never bother with the Old Testament, it's like watching the Wizard of Oz and starting with flying monkeys and never knowing where they are, who they are, what they're doing, and what their goals are. God had a plan. The Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit had a plan by the, before the creation of the world in this beautiful dance of love to join us with him. And he knew what he was doing, and he shows it through this story of Abraham's family. And seeing it in the Old Testament is so rich and rewarding. I just hate that so many people miss it. So now we're going to go to the kingdom era and, of course, Saul and David. And then the exile era, which is a, an amazing time where you really understand what we can relate to today. Living in America in this mist of insanity, 
the, the, the Hebrews lived there. They lived in Babylon. They had to go through living with, you know, worldly people every day, um, ungodly people and idolatry and materialism and, and, and sexual sin all the time and how they handled it or they, how they didn't handle it. And then finally, after 70 years, when they returned and rebuilt the, you know, starting with the wall, Nehemiah and Ezra, and then the silent Sarah is between the Testaments. This isn't actually a Bible study. It's a historical study of what happened to the Bible people, because it's, it's so funny that you start, you know, you, you stop it at Malachi and then you open back up with Matthew and all of a sudden we've got a whole different bunch of people in charge and you're dealing with the Greeks and the Romans and the Hebrews and you lose perspective if you don't know what happened during that 400 year period of the silent area. So it's a very important period to study and understand to grasp the entire Bible. Then of course the gospel era, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the story the stories of Jesus, of what Jesus taught. You want to know the character of God? You want to really know the true character of God? Study Jesus. What he says and does is God the Father working through him. God of the Old Testament was not mean and out and vengeful. He is a loving God and made this plan to bring us into him. And he had to do it a certain way. And when you study it this way, you'll get it. So Jesus his miracles, his dealing with the people, his forgiveness, his love, and his stories, all in this gospel era. And then the church era, which is now we've got hit Paul and what happened to him. We start with the church era starts with the ascension of Christ and what he told the disciples to go and do and then how they went and did it. And then the last era is the missions era, is how the disciples took the gospel from Israel to the to the rest of the world. So that's the 12 eras, and it's available in a class bundle. So I'm going to go ahead and click over there and show you a little bit more about it. This is the page that you would sign up for. I talk about me and how I was homeschooling for 30 years, and this is the program that I liked. And I went back and forth with other programs, and I always felt good about this. Instead of 66 books, it's 12 errors. Very easy to understand. And if you're hungry for God and you want a good relationship with him and you want a good grasp of the Bible, of the key people and the events all the way through, this is the class for you. So here we go. If you're confused, if you've taken Sunday school, if you got saved late and you didn't study the Bible until late, or even if you were in Sunday school, you know, most Christians today, you walk up and say, who was first, Moses or Noah? And a lot of them don't know. A lot of them, a lot of people don't know where Moses and Jesus fit in a timeline. So this is important to get the timeline down. And I was confused and overwhelmed. And I tried a lot of different things. And this is what I came down to. And I spent six years developing these lessons. I used over 5,000 books that I have on my Logos library to pull together these lessons to give to you. And then here are some people who say nice things about what they've learned. And if you go here, you can read them. If you go to the Facebook group, you'll read lots more. So here's what's inside the course. There's over 200 lessons, um, dozens and dozens of videos. It's a 12 Bible study class, each covering one historical Bible era to help you see the Bible as one unified story. Every single lesson has Bible journaling ideas. You don't have to Bible journal. If that's not your thing, that's okay. But a lot of people enjoy it, and they enjoy it so much that they spend a lot of time learning it. I want to caution you that just because when you're Bible studying, say your Bible study takes 20 to 40 minutes, and then your Bible journaling takes two hours, don't feel bad about that. Bible journaling is a craft. It's, it's hands-on. It takes a little bit more time, and you're learning something. But what you're doing with that craft is learning the Bible. When you take the Bible's lesson and then put what you've learned into little boxes, it's, you're synthesizing, you're summarizing what you've learned, and that's a huge learning thing anyway because that's why teachers give – homeschool projects to children because that's how they learn. And then once you get it together, you have this beautiful book that you've created that you can share with others. 
And that's another important part. When I was homeschooling, I learned something called the format system. Uh, there's um, dozens of years behind this system and dozens of uh, learning styles experts that came up with it. And it's basically four steps in every class that I taught, whether it's history or science or English or math, I would first talk about why we're going to learn what we're going to learn because some children need to know. And if they don't know, it doesn't make sense to them. They don't want to learn it. Secondly, you teach the lesson. That's the part that we read the text or the video. And then thirdly, doing something with it. Because if you don't do something with what you've learned, you forget it. And you, you all know that from your experience. And fourthly is to share it with someone else. These four steps are built into the lessons. Why? Learn it what? Do something with it and teach it to someone else. And then we have a 24-7 community. We have a Bible Journal um, Facebook group. Let me just click it on real fast for you. And you'll see several people in different places in the lessons. Right now, we are in the um, Patriarch lessons. So we've got Hagar and Ishmael here. And the covenant, Abraham's covenant. But someone here is in Melchizedek. Different people doing different sharing. They're different Bible journaling and what God's laid on their heart. This is, in, but somebody else is in the church era. And what happens is when you go through the 12 Bible eras and then you come back and you see something from another era that you either haven't gotten to yet or that you've already covered, it brings back the memories of what you learned in that era. So you have continual learning going on. So let's go back to where we were and go over real quickly what each one of these includes. So we have each one of these is a class divided into four major parts, and those are divided into 17 at least lessons, sometimes more. So creation goes through creation, the Cain and Abel, Noah, the flood, the first covenant, the tower of battle, and the dispersion of the nations, how God reveals himself through scripture, and we comprehend his loving character, his traits, and his promises. The patriarchal era covers Genesis 12 through 50, huge period Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, and in-depth studies of each one of them, Abraham's call, Abraham's you know, name change, Abraham and Sarah, Hagar, Ishmael, and all that. The Exodus teaches us the same God who freed the Israelites frees us from slavery to sin, and we study the Passover in-depth. And we will touch on several of the feasts because I wrote a book called A Family Guide to the Biblical Holidays, and I incorporate all the feasts into the proper historical era. Uh, how God frees us from slavery to sin and servitude to worldly pharaohs and directs us to our promised country that he has prepared for us. The conquest era is Joshua's bold and courageous life of victory, one of my favorite books, my favorite eras. He motivates us today to live up because we are in the midst of this insanity and we need to fight the spiritual battles, the same battles that Joshua fought to promote God's word. The Judges era, we, we include Judges and Ruth. So Judges is all the, the Israelites reoccurring. There was a cycle where they prospered, they abandoned God, they experienced affliction, God rescued them, things got better until they pushed the repeat button and did it again. And you will see those cycles today in the midst of this insanity in America, which in a way gives us hope because even though it looks as crazy as it is right now, we have hope that the people will return to God. And then we have, of course, the story of Ruth, a Moabite who was the great grandmother of King David, who was in the lineage of Christ. Then the kingdom era, we uncover 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, and 2 Kings. It's also a 400-year period, beginning with Saul and then going through David's reign, David's battles, David's sins, and then King Solomon's rule. And then, of course, that ends up in the, the division of the northern and the southern kingdoms. Then the exile era. Again, this is when the Bible people were living with world in 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 captivity in Babylon and what they did there and how they handled it and what it was like until the time for the whole 70 year period and then when you find out they get get a 
get to go on to the return, a lot of them didn't want to return because they adapted, adopted the worldly ways. And all through every single one of the 12 Bible eras is we study Christ and how the, each story points us to Jesus. And that's the most exciting part. Then the return that God raised up these wonderful, faithful people, the stories of Ezra and Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the wall. And, and I give you also, which really helped me and I enjoyed, is some fiction titles that you could read to go along with the class. And you could read those aloud to your children or assign them to your children. And that gives you even a better idea of what it was like during that time period and how God is showing mercy and grace. He didn't become a God of mercy and grace in the New Testament. He has always been a God of mercy and grace and love, despite our failures. The silence area, this is the intertestament period. This is after Malachi and before Matthew, 400 years where there was no prophetic word from God, but God, don't, don't hesitate to believe, God was working through this period. And this gaps, this this is why you understand the the political changes during those 400 years and why they are so different starting in the New Testament. And we also include an in-depth study on Hanukkah and how Hanukkah reveals Christ. Then we hit the Gospels. Now here's the direct lessons of Jesus, his parables, his prophecies, and his life, death, and resurrection. Then we go to the church era, and what we learn here is the church is not a building. The church is a human connection of love. We walk in union with God. We walk in union with each other. It's not a weekly activity. It's not somewhere we have to show up. It's a lifestyle. It's learning how to allow the Holy Spirit to love through us and love others, others that believe like we do, and then to take that love on out to others who don't believe like we do and to show them the love of Christ so then they see it in us that they want to do it to walk our walk and it's fascinating history I love to encourage people to after they get a good story good grasp of the 12 Bible eras to go on and study church history because you'll find out studying the 12 Bible journal eras there's a lot of things that happens in churches mainline churches today that are not biblical, that did not come from the Bible. It doesn't mean they're wrong. There's a lot of stuff that you assume is biblical that did not come from the Bible. It was added on later. So if you study church history, you can see when it was added on, why, and whether or not you want to agree with that or not. It's very interesting. And then we go to the missions, and that's where we talk more about Paul, Paul's journey. We walk with Paul, and we get a vivid understanding of his, his story, his imprisonment, his persecution, and how wonderful he handled it and, and grew the church and took the gospel from Jude, Judea throughout the world. So we're going to see the Bible as one unified story, see Jesus in every book, create beautiful art if you want to, without any drawing skills, watch the step-by-step -step videos. There are step-by-step -step videos on how to Bible journal digitally, or you can do it by hand, by cutting and pasting, whichever one appeals to you the most. Or you can take memory dex cards, and I'm going to show you those in a minute. How to be organized, to have a daily Bible study plan. And I'm doing another um, video on mistakes I made in homeschooling. And I'll just mention to you here, the biggest mistake I ever made in homeschooling was getting so worried about algebra and grammar that I completely forgot Bible. There's nothing more important for you to teach your children than the Bible. Don't forget that. You're homeschooling, I think, that you brought your children home because you didn't want them in the world, that you want them to have godly influences. Then teach them the word of God. The word won't return void. God will show you what grammar and algebra they're going to need. He made them. He knows what they're going to need. Follow God's plan, not man's, for what your children need. And that you will gain confidence because your priorities are in order when you put God first. So we are going step by step through the Bible chronologically and at the end of the year, and then you can repeat it every year to get more and more in depth. You have a good grasp of the main people, key events, geography in chronological order. You've probably created either a treasure journal or at least a notebook because you've got to at least take notes to 
document what you've learned, and then you have something to look back on that you'll have forever. Or you'll have a box of memory decks cards. You can, you'll have this class that you can turn to for years. You will meet new friends and fellowship in this community. You have a 24-7 place you can go and ask questions. And you'll see Jesus in both the Old and New Testament. When you join, you get an email from us. And I have a special right now that I'm offering. If you type in the word homeschool and the number two, all caps, homeschool and the number two, in the coupon area, you'll get a 30% discount on the every one of the 12 Bible errors at once. And that's if you choose just to do the study, you'll get 30% off of that. If you choose to do the study with the art kits, you'll get 30% off that. So either way you go, you get 30% off. You save more when you get more. So trust your gut. Go for it. If you're not completely convinced that this is the Bible study that you want to choose to do with your children, then you can get a full refund. No questions asked. Just pop me up. The best way to do it is to go to the Facebook group and then click the messages and leave me a personal message and you'll have a refund. So that's a little bit about this. Now I want to tell, take you to the, oh, and also when you type in homeschool two, you will get a bonus class. And this class is one that you can take before you take the other class, and it's an overview. It's called One Unified Story, and you go through one lesson for each one of the 12 eras. So you have 13 lessons altogether. One isn't, well, it's a little bit more. There's an overview, and then it's a little bit about geography, some basic geography of the Bible, and then you go into uh, the Bible structure and then each era and go over what we're going to cover in each area, and then we go into the meaty lessons. So let's take a look at the meaty lessons and this is the way everyone logs into the class you go to classes my Bible journal classes and when you first start you will receive the one unified story bonus class and the creation era class because this is where you're starting the rest of the classes will be added to you on the first of each month so let's take a peek at let's look at the kingdom era and you can look at more of these classes by going to my face, uh, my YouTube channel and going through. You can see how I make Bible study, Bible journal pages, and a lot of other things. I want you to notice that there are two sections. One section is the course introduction, and it's broken down into these sections. Welcome, about, the objectives, the kit, and how to make a treasure journal, and what are memory decks cards. And then you have the actual lessons. And they also show up when you're in the lesson. You'll get, you can scroll through the lessons over here too. This one has uh, 21 lessons in it. And we'll just jump to David on the run. For example, this is random. There happens to be a video in this one. Every lesson includes a Bible journal page. Every lesson includes a Bible journal page. This is a sample page that I have created with the kit that's in the, with that with the kit that comes with this lesson if you choose that option and it has my idea of what would be a good page. You can completely ignore it or use it as um, an inspiration. And here we had Saul's death and David on the run. Now you'll see that I have a lot of these little journaling spots, they're called, and what we do with those is we summarize what we have learned. And this outline here, I put in this Bible journal page here of what happens in 1 Samuel. And now we have something to go back to. Also, when you're reading the lesson, which, you know, it's a long lesson, and then you're summarizing what was said, into your own words, into your own paragraph, that's when you're learning. You're writing to learn. You're learning to be succinct. You're learning to get to the point, And you're learning how to put a lot of information in a very small square. So you're learning a lot by doing this. So here's an outline. We talked about the death of Samuel. Here's a map to show the life of Samuel. Um, the story of Nabal, Beauty and the Beast. Another map of David. Then where... Uh, Again, where David spares Saul, where David tricked the Philistines, and then I intersperse some Bible journaling that I've done on my own that, of verses that popped out to me when I was creating the lesson. 
and this is a memory deck card. I'm going to show you some more about that in a minute. And then here's another Bible uh, video, Saul and the Witch of Endor. So you can see these lessons are quite involved. It's going to take you between 20 and 30 minutes, maybe even 40, to go through, to read through one lesson. That's why we only give you about four lessons per week. And then life lessons, how we can trust God to go forth in faith. And then more, I love graphs and charts, and I use them whenever I can. And then, of course, the life lessons of what we're learning in this. And then the Bible journaling uh, ideas. Let me go back over to the Kingdom Era main page. And so here's the welcome to the course. It's an introduction and telling you every lesson you should ask. What does this tell me about God? Every time you sit down and read the Bible, you should ask yourself these questions. What does this tell me about the people and how should I live my life based on what I've read? About your instructor, me, and then uh, the objectives. The main things, because we will have four main sections in each one. And then I go over each book that we're going to learn. A little small snapshot. And then I show you the kit. And this is what is in the kit. If you enrolled with the class with kit, you will get this. If you didn't, you won't get it. And then... There's two ways people use these. These are digital kits. They're created like a digital scrapbook kit where you can drag and drop the pictures into an image on in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or something similar and then print them out and put them in a notebook if you, if you prefer or you can just share them online. Or you can print them out. They come in 8.5 by 11 pages. You can print from your computer on plain paper and glue into a treasure journal or your Bible or your Bible margin, or you can print them out on sticker paper and make them actual stickers. And that's totally up to you. You can go watch my YouTube channels for more of that. So here is what is a treasure journal, and here's a video. I'm going to take off the sound. You can see some of the pages that we did in learning this time period. Just to give you an example, here you go. The Ark, King Saul, Saul's Fall, David on the Run, David and Bathsheba. So here's how to create a treasure journal. This is a treasure journal flip through and information on how to do this by paper by hand or by digital in Photoshop and then a memory decks card for those of you who are old enough to know this is a Rolodex and memory decks cards are little four by four cards with two little holes in the bottom that will fit into either a Rolodex or into a little box and we have a pattern that you can print out from your computer and make yourself a little box and there's lots of videos to tell you how to do that. And you can make the memory decks cards digitally. You can either print 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper and cut them out, or you can make them digitally and then print them out on cardstock. And then you could do that on, with a Cricut or something similar to it, or just do it on your own. And then, of course, again, here's you know, uh, every class has a bibliography. There's, there's a bit regular bibliography that I used all the way through the lessons, and I use hundreds of different um, Bible study uh, scholars to come up with this lesson. And there's links that you can go if you want to add that to your library. I get mine from Logos. And then, but there also includes links to um, Amazon if you want to get it by paper or in Kindle. Then in each lesson, there's also a work cited for things that only that I only referred to for that specific lesson. And here's, for example, K Author is one that I use a lot. Uh, Warren Worsby and Marvin Wilson I use in almost every class. And Larry Richards, just to give you an example of, of the people I use. These are mainline uh, Bible teachers, Bible scholars. Now let's go to my home and pick one more class just to show you a little bit more about the class. Each class has its own color palette. And let's go to the return era. Again, 
welcome to the course about your instructor, the outline, uh, the chronology. This, this, this has a sample schedule and what it's doing there is just giving you an idea of different ways that you can incorporate this into your week. You don't have to do it this way. It's just a sample. If you want to get through it in one month, there's one suggestion. And let's go to Passover. We also do Passover in the Exodus class. But here we are uh, in the return era where they, they reinstituted Passover. And Darius's prayer request, the temple foundation was finished, and the people of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest returned to exile, celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. And then they celebrated Passover, and we, we go into the biblical feast again because I've written a book on it, and it's a passion of mine to share because it's a beautiful thing that how we see Jesus through the Passover and what we can learn from that. So that's one lesson. Let's go to Queen Esther because the book of Esther is in this lesson also and how she, God used her to save. Hadassah was her real name and we call her Esther. How God used her um, with her going to her husband to save the Israelites. And let's go to home. Um, and just peek real quickly at one more era. We'll look at Paul in the church era. Again, welcome to the course about your instructor, etc., etc. And then we get into um, Peter and John, Ananias and Sapphira, Stephen. Let's look at Stephen. Where Stephen was persecuted. Um, what was happening during that period when the seven when when we had the widows and the seven were chosen because they were so busy. They needed to go a different direction. And then what happened to Stephen, um, how he was stoned, and the dispute, how they brought him, and then his death, and then how God raises, delivers, and always, again, pictures of Jesus all the way through. Then the stoning of Jesus, the growth of the church, and our life lessons to us. What does the story of Stephen teach us about us? about how we should handle today. Oh, let's go through the judges. Now we're at the judges class. Let's go to the and look at this search because this is a powerful function that a lot of people miss. And let's type in Ruth because this section goes over Ruth and the judges, the, the whole book of Ruth. And here we have Ruth and Boaz, Naomi and Ruth, the summary, the overview, the bibliography. So you can see that this is a powerful search that we have here and here's Naomi, Ruth and Boaz and the lineage of Christ which is a beautiful thing that God took Moab a pagan and brought her to Bethlehem to be part of the lineage of Christ and then they marry and then here's the important parts that you want to know and then the life lessons this one is a freebie uh, that was included with these little butterflies and some stitches and some chipboard. And there's about four freebies, sometimes five, in each class. And each year I add a little bit more freebies and a little bit more text or video. So each year you come back and do it again, you'll, you'll get more depth. So back to BibleJournalClasses.com. In case you want to make sure that you've got all the freebies, so we'll click on the Gospel era and then click on Search and type in freebie. And hopefully I said freebie in, okay, so here's Christ's childhood. And there's the treasure journal pages, a map. And here's the freebie. So we have several titles of, for chipboard and some butterflies and some brads and some pretty watercolors. So all you have to do is type in freebie, and that'll show you, again, if you scroll down to the bottom, you're probably going to see a download there. Here's several things from the life of Christ. 
I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you go over to our Facebook group and join us, and you can ask all the questions you want. If you have a specific message question for me, you can go over to Messenger and send me a message, and I will respond usually within 24 hours. I just hope you get to join us. And I'm also doing a homeschool mistakes video, so try to get that too. Bye-bye for now.